Now welcome to another Marvel Cinematic Ranking, where this time we'll be taking a look at Thor The Dark World. We'll be looking at the poll, responding to some of the comments left on the poll, and seeing where it ends up ranking overall in the MCU after eight movies now. And so let's waste no time and get right to the results, where we'll see that 47% of people gave Thor The Dark World three stars and thought it was about average. 34% then gave it two stars. 9% gave it four. 9% gave it one. And a final 1% gave Thor The Dark World one star and thought it was an amazing film. And so when we do all the math here, that means Thor The Dark World ends up with an average score of 2.59 stars and puts it in the last place overall. Oh, that's sad. It is kind of sad because um, I actually really like Thor The Dark World. Of course, I might be a little biased. I'm a pretty big Thor fan. I knew this was going to be the case. I knew it was going to finish really, pretty low. I thought it would be above Hulk. I didn't, and that's not because I think it's a worse movie than Hulk. I just, I think a lot of people are really down on Thor The Dark World, for, you know, for good reasons or bad reasons, whatever. You can, of course, feel however you want. That's why we do these, to see how people think. And so why don't we just um, move on to the comments, but not before, once again, just saying thank you to everybody who votes, comments, and watches these or any of our videos. Also, a big, big thank you to everyone who supports this channel over on Patreon. And so now let's kick it off, as we always do, with the top-rated comment. Top comment is coming from Ace Gamer Boy 18 Biggest problem was Malekith. He was so hard to recognize or even feel is a threat. Marvel could have taken a note from Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Earth's Mightiest Heroes might be the best oh, comic book show I've ever seen. Up there with the original kind of 90s oh, X-Men show. It's got that great opening song. Uh, yes. <laughs> we, we like binged. We Earth's did because we, we found that kind of late. Because we, yeah, we found it, I think, a year or two after it came out and just both seasons just like oh my god this is so good where, so where did this good. come from and it was really a lot of it was very comically very accurate, accurate to the comics really happy yes well. yes very good but anyway malekith in the series or in the show excuse me he didn't feel like a dark elf the dark elves didn't feel like dark elves no. dark elves didn't feel like anything that was maybe the biggest problem the dark elves were well, about as generic the as you ever on them which made them just generic peons Yes. They had no personality. They were like the, or like the putties features. from, um, from Power, Power Rangers. Rangers. And I don't even know oh. much about Power Rangers. I kind of missed the boat on that. But yeah. that's what they reminded me of like the stupid putties and how they just get beat up and they're just there. Even if I don't know anything else about them or care. Well, that's they, they the didn't dark make elves. you care about Malachi either or his crusade. Or, he didn't really even show enough emotion as to why he was doing it. And those darn Oz guardians who hunted us into oblivion. <laughs> why was Malachi trying to do whatever he was trying to do? We just watched that movie and I barely yes, remember. Yes, we, we rewatched it. That's how the universe was meant it's, to be. It's supposed and to be dark, they are yeah. dark elves, so they would want a dark, dark universe. universe. I mean, Makes it's, sense. It's oh, yeah. I changed my mind. He's an amazing <laughs> villain. But no, I, I agree with this comment. Malachi is a huge letdown. And the dark elves in general are just putties. Yeah. Not to mention, there were a lot of them. I mean, they were like, oh, we've been hunted into extinction yeah. pretty much. But then there's there's always more. There's, there's always however more. many you need to have your heroes beat up. Yes. I think I said that right. Crazy. Next comment is from J.L. Ender. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought the finale was Marvel's better ending set pieces. And the interplay between Thor and Loki was great as always. Definitely not perfect, but it was much better than some of the recent efforts we've gotten. That kind of goes with Bow and Horn. My biggest hot take regarding the MCU is that The Dark World is my favorite Thor film. The development it gives to Loki and Thor's relationship and the relationships to Odin and Frigga is great. The scene between Thor and Loki on the boat to Malekith is one of the best scenes in the whole MCU. It also has some really fun action and humor, and as bland as Malekith is, he's somehow still not the worst <laughs> MCU villain. Somehow, Malekith is not the worst. Yeah, there were a ton of comments that kind of alluded to that there is a lot of good in it. Not mm -hmm. saying there isn't a lot of bad, too, but that it is kind of an underrated or overhated film. I do really like the interactions Thor has with his family. Yeah. It really does set up the relationship between him and his brother. Him and you Loki know, are great in this. Oh this might be the best <sighs> Thor-Loki movie we have. It feels just like their heart-to-heart -heart moments... Are really what oh, make Loki's, them brothers. Loki's death, his, you know, one of his deaths, and, you know, and, then the and this one is really good. When it, you know it actually is coming from Loki and not. Yeah, from and Odin. Thor is saying 
Thor is saying things about Loki that he doesn't know Loki would be hearing, and it, it would have to touch Loki, you would think. You know, it, it has, has to be to. like, wow, he's actually, you know, talking that I died with honor or mm -hmm. bravely or nobly, whatever he technically says. I mean, like, Loki, with all my with all his flaws, well, was a yeah. better, better understanding of rule than I ever could. Yeah, he gives he's... Loki a lot of credit, and Loki kind of responds in kind, even though they don't, mm -hmm. well, he knows, Loki knows, but... When you see Thor the doesn't. relationship between Loki and his mother with, you know, with Frigga. Oh, that's one of the best scenes when oh. he learns out that she's dead and he kind of pointed them in the right direction, it. too. The guilt he must be feeling. Yeah. There's so many really deep, beautiful, emotional, like, family scenes. Yeah. It's, a, you know, I But then I they get... introduce Goofy Jane back into it. Well, Goofy Jane, Goofy Darcy, and so on. It's just like they need to keep him away from Earth. Maybe or, that, you know, that well, was part of the problem. just keep him on Asgard, keep I on, guess. Keep him with the Asgardians. Yeah, because he gets goofy on other planets, too. hinted at him, like, hey, you could look at what's right in front of you, and there was Sif working out, looking over at him. <laughs> I was like, come on. Yeah. I feel so bad for Sif. Everyone's like, yeah, Thor and Jane. What about Sif? I don't know that anybody uh, cheers for Thor and Jane anymore. I don't know. This this movie didn't really do much for Thor and <laughs> well, Jane. Well, we don't have to anymore. I, I'm on Team Sif. Yeah, I know. You've always been on Team Sif. <laughs> always I've always been on Team Sif, too. Yes. But that's... Malekith, though, is pretty wooden as a villain, Oh, kind of. Calling him wooden is calling yeah. That's an upgrade. He just he's looks not even so wood. bulky. He's even like in the his fake armor, wood. he kind of just like waddles around. He's it's like the, the particle that board great. that you buy when you get like a cheap furniture at Walmart. He's the particle board. He's not even like real wood. I liked that they tried to go out there on one of the on the villain. They just didn't do it good enough. I mean, Malekith is a good character. Oh, he's from great the comics, in the comics. He was great in yeah. Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And then they're like, oh, we're gonna, gonna make a live here. action version of him. Just. <laughs> If whatever he's a human we'll with just burn ears. half his face <laughs> just a human with yeah. pointy ears we'll give him some contacts uh yeah we're good we're good go. give him Ship a group it. of putties we're fine super goose says i am one of the rare people that enjoyed dark world i think it was mostly the humor in the soundtrack that did it for me as well as loki's arc one of the best soundtracks in the mcu i the, think the music shines yeah really good i i looked at thor like i said we just rewatched the movie to kind of freshen up for this and they got to the part, you know, Loki's death, and the music just takes over the moment, and it's beautiful. Which is something that I think M the MCU films, the music in them, I should say, mm -hmm. fails to do oftentimes. Right, I looked at you and said, remember the next movie uses synthesizers in 80s. Oh, part. yeah. <laughs> yeah, how could I? I? I mean, I didn't forget, but... No, I think this is one of the few times when the music actually does its mm -hmm. job, where it actually takes over oh, and makes goodness. you... In the music for Frigga's, in the Asgardian oh, yeah. funeral? The Asgardian funeral. It's touching. The Asgardian funeral in general was really good. Unit Nitro, I genuinely like this movie and is my favorite of the Thor movies to this day. It feels like a logical next step after Thor 1. Sad how this is the last Thor movie before he becomes a walking joke machine. That goes with Economic. I will admit it's one of my least rewatched but I thought it was fine. A few high points, Logi, Frigga, etc. A bit of a well-timed comedy that didn't feel too out of place. Thor putting his hammer on the coat rack, it chasing him across the universe, etc. Nobody felt out of character. Downsides were a forgettable villain and a mildly confusing post credit scene. How did Loki get back? Get on the throne, get rid of Odin, etc. Kind of the very model of a C film. Some good moments, a few bad moments, but just bland at parts. This also goes with Caleb. I don't understand why this movie gets so much hate on rewatch. It's actually my favorite of the Thor movies. I've always preferred Thor when he's portrayed as a competent, heroic warrior who's a little bit of a fish out of water among humans rather than an incompetent goofball who's the butt of every joke from Love and Thunder and less so Ragnarok. The only flaw this has is that Malekith is kind of boring villain. But I don't think he needed to be a Thanos or even Loki-level character for this movie to be good. His purpose was to be the bad guy for Thor to beat, and he filled that purpose well. Yeah, this is the best. In a manner of speaking, this is, I think, easily the best Thor movie. Because I think this is the most Thor. And I mean that in both, like, in terms of the character and the fantasy elements and just, you know, adapting the lore from the comics. I, I think this is, like, this is what Thor should be. There's humor in it, as pointed out. It's not like the slapsticky humor that we see in Ragnarok and especially in Love and Thunder. You know, it's more of the fish out of water. It's more of the little, like, the coat rack. I, I love the coat yes. rack. 
you know. he's trying to be courteous, and he thinks that's an Earth custom, so <laughs> yeah, he just so he hangs his he hammer, hangs his hammer yeah. up. And I found that a very endearing thing. To like, oh, he's trying to be polite, and yeah, he doesn't realize that's really not where you'd put your hammer. <laughs> yes, and even like the Selvig, you know, like with the pants, and you know, maybe it's a little too much. I don't know, but it, it's not like again, it's not over the top. It's a little humorous. You know, it's mm-hmm. far more subtle than in your face. You know. Love and they Thunder just decided and to Ragnar. start making him dumb. He's not dumb. I mean, the problem is, let's let's call it as it is. Chris Helmsworth is an extremely, extremely charismatic guy, right? Well, he the, is hilarious, actually. Well, in the char- the character arc that he left here was a more responsible Thor, a yeah. Thor who's more humble. Yeah, from watch the like, first movie and then watch the end of this one. Then yeah. he turns into a ham. He goes into the even in Ragnarok goes into the ship and he thinks the password for him is strongest Avenger. Oh, it's not yeah. me. What do you mean it's not me? Strongest Avenger. He, his yeah. humility got like destroyed and how he's arrogant again but yeah. this was the first couple of movies here where he he grew as a person and they just went ah regress him he's yeah, the butt well, of the jokes now it's fine well as as we can tell from the comments you know Thor the Dark World got a ton of hate you know I'm not saying it doesn't deserve some of it it's not the best movie I'm acknowledging that for sure but it did and it, I think it told Marvel like people like funny Thor people like Chris Helmsworth being able to be like I said before he's extremely charismatic so they let him just be charismatic. They, he stopped being Thor and he started being funny Chris Helmsworth. When you look at how the movie was when it came out, it was competing with Captain America, the Avengers movie had just come out, the Iron Man films. Nowadays, if you look at this and compare it to the current batch of movies we have, this is a gold-plated movie. Yeah, there might be some comments coming up that talk about that, but yes, oh, I agree. sorry, I'm <laughs> you, skipping ahead yes, unintentionally. You, you, no, but I mean, it's obvious, but yeah, we'll get to that soon all right let's move on then talon productions thor the dark world is not only the most over hated film in the mcu but one of the most over hated movies out there it gets so much hell for simply being average sure it doesn't do much great but it also isn't particularly bad or offensive malekith could be way better sure and the plot is simple but loki is fantastic in this Frigga's death and funeral are emotional and carry weight and the film has some pretty fun action scenes the score is awesome as well. I really wish that main theme had stuck around. Plus, I enjoy a more serious Thor than the overly jokey one we have now. I can understand people having this one on the lower end of the MCU rankings, but I will never understand anyone who thinks this is a genuinely bad or terrible movie. This is probably my favorite Thor film, flaws and all. It takes itself seriously while still having fun, but doesn't overdo the humor like Ragnarok or Love and Thunder. This is very well put. I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, very well put. I mean, it kind of sums up a lot of the things we've been talking about, but very, you know, succinctly. I, I agree. Yeah. I honestly barely know what to say to this. I know. I that. It covers so much. <laughs> I mean, the score is one thing that I yeah, the totally score is, underappreciated. Yeah. The theme, one of the themes that they use is um, Sons of Asgard. I love that theme. That is the Asgard theme, and they like never use it again. They're like, yeah, it's garbage. I'm no, like, we, no, as you pointed out, we get our synthesizers and like our '80s music. Yeah, because that's Ragnarok. what we wanted out of Thor. No, that's Guardians of the Galaxy jokey stuff. Leave that with that. That's, Thor has a totally different feel and weight and drama, and that's what I want. Guardians Thor to of the Galaxy to. success was another component into the Thor Ragnarok, mm. I believe, because it showed that the taking Marvel kind of a more fun approach can be very successful and very enjoyed. Omar Alami, one of the biggest things that often gets forgotten when talking about Thor 2 is that it tied into the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was a relatively new concept at the time. I believe this was the week after the movie was released. The show was dealing with portals appearing around Earth. Was this the result of Thor 2 or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I don't know, but this was huge at the time, the first time Marvel recognized what was happening in the movies in a show format. Overall, I'd say average, but compared to what Marvel puts out now, I would say 3.8 out of 5. Yeah, I like the connection to Agents yeah, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, uh, Sif showed up. Yeah. I they kinda... said that like they had found something in the remnants of the ship. They were in like, yeah, London. Yeah, like the wreckage in London. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they actually, yeah, Sif was there. I was kind of disappointed when S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of stopped. Because they did that for Ultron as well. They were kind of connections and stuff. And Winter Soldier had huge connections yeah. because that's when Shield Hydra fell. came yeah. out of the wall. You know. Yeah. So yeah, but I mean, it's kind of a very, very good comment to point that out because I, mm-hmm. I wish that's what Agents of Shield had. I mean, Agents of Shield is good in its own right. Don't get me wrong, but I kind mm-hmm. of missed the fact that it did kind of directly tie into the MCU at one point. Mm-hmm. 
Next comment is from Mantis R. It was a one or two in the context of the time in comparison with what we got later, a solid three. That is what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Time I mean, makes fools of us all. It does. We all I hated mean, Thor Dark World, and now we look back and fondly at it going, I wish we would have gotten you again. Yeah, I mean, we we just rewatched it, and, and same thing with Iron Man 3. I rewatched them like, you know... Maybe, Some, there was yeah. magic in those originals. Maybe there was there's something in them. Now, granted, at the time, yes, I, I understand why people didn't like them back then. But there's something about them, you know, even ten years ago, that I'm like, that's not as bad as what I've been watching recently. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> there's just some sort of a magic that Marvel had. And I feel like and it wasn't just that it was new and exciting and superhero because those ones stand the test of time. Going yeah. back and watching them, I keep finding more facets to enjoy. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching Dark World again. Now, granted, like I said, I'm a, I'm a Thor fan and I liked it originally, but I'm like, wow, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind this at all. And it kind of feels to me like it's pointing out flaws in the current MCU formula. Yeah. Seeing these old ones is going, I'm going, why did they get rid of doing stuff like this? Why yeah. did they get rid of doing that? I don't know why. I don't know if they know why. Yeah. I mean, the CGI in this movie was better than the CGI we had in She-Hulk. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah. I don't, not even. I don't even understand it. Technology improved since 2013. <laughs> yeah, I know. You would think eight, nine years later it would be cheaper and easier and faster, and, and yet, I guess not. Whitman Paxton says, Pros, great music, especially Thor's new theme. Fun climax with the portals. Seeing more of Asgard in the other realms. Cons, lack of any menacing antagonists. Constant interruptions in tone with going back to Cat Dennings and crew on Earth. Jane Foster becoming a human MacGuffin. With little character growth. I had a good time watching Thor 2, but I can see why this one's on the lower entries to the MCU. Yeah, I mean, to point out something that we haven't talked too much about would be the Jane Foster becoming... Oh. A, she was, yeah, she gets the <sighs> the ether and that's, Everything, that's her story. Anytime they pop back to the, the Earth group, I'm like, eh... It just wasn't as good. No, it seemed like it's Natalie like Portman... It's they made a Mash of the Universe movie and set the whole thing on Earth or something. Oh, why... Why would you ever do that? <laughs> hey, no, I love that Sorry. movie as a kid. Still, it's one of those movies that you love. I refuse you love to rewatch it, it because I actually started bad. to rewatch it. We started to rewatch it because I don't. I want to rewatch it. I like. I know. I made yeah, you start it, and tonight. I turned it off, and I'm like, I can't do this because I'm going to end up not liking this anymore because it's so bad. But sometimes things are so bad they're good that you love I know. them more. I, I, Flash Gordon, for example. <laughs> the Giver. Another, don't even bring up the Giver. I Mark Hamill's. Guyver. Mark Hamill plays a grasshopper. A giant mutant grasshopper. Well, he starts not, as a, we are getting, he starts we're getting as off topic. We're, we're losing it, but yes. But no, my point is, I, it felt like Natalie Portman wanted nothing to do with this movie. She kind of mailed in her performance, and it, yeah, it didn't help the fact that she wasn't no written well at all. So, yes. Final comment is coming from ABXX2011. Malekith was so different from the comics, completely devoid of all his colorfulness and charisma. Maybe they thought he would come across as silly or didn't want him to outshine Loki. I don't know. But that was a major disappointment for me. I also didn't like the change of actors for Fandral, though he didn't have much of a part anyway. The battle in the end, moving through multiple worlds, was confusing, and I'm still not exactly sure what the Dark Elves' plan was. Overall, it wasn't a bad movie. Helmsworth and Hiddleston were great as usual. Stan Lee's Can I Have My Shoe Back? was his best line, and Frigga's funeral was one of the most beautiful scenes in all of the MCU. Yeah, I, I wonder with the Malekith being kind of... Because he is colorful in the comic books. He's not yes. like burnt half his face kind of drab and dreary. But I think they need to show that these these realms are different. It's not just, oh, I'm an elf and I happen to live in yeah. Svartalheim. I think it's... I mean, they made everyone just the same. I think what's funny is if they made this movie today, I think Malekith would be oh, he over the top, colorful, and humorous. He'd be looking like a court jester. Yeah, and he, I mean, he kind of does have a little bit. I know. He does have that look a little bit. So I, I think it's... But I think he needed to be more elf-like. They all did. Like I said, like the putties we were talking about before they with the Dark Elves. They're generic, like putties. They're yeah. generic, kind of no... I, I don't know anything about Dark Elves, uh, you know, in this movie anyway. And I don't know anything about what he really wants. And it's just it just falls flat in that department where I, I really think he could have embraced them and, you know, gotten into a little bit of their, you know, their culture and who they are, what they want. You know, and the whole movie just kind of comes off, other than some of the Asgard stuff, comes off very kind of drab and, you know, not very colorful and just kind of dreary. And and then, you know, we, of course, go over the top with Ragnarok next, but we'll get to that movie eventually. Yep. All right. Well, that is all we got for you this time. So now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you thought of Thor The Dark World. 
And also you can go ahead and vote on the poll for Captain America Winter Soldier. It should be up probably about the time this one will be posted. So go vote in that, leave your comments there, and maybe we'll discuss them in the next video. Either way, do leave your comments somewhere. Let's talk some Marvel. And until next time, thanks for watching.